All right, so take my other, other holder off. Whoops. Oh, the knobs of it just touting so much. Just pull that one right off because it turns out because I have to lower these down so far, there's not much meat for those to hold on to. I guess there is, it was just a little loose. Okay, anyways. All right, so a couple things I gotta do. I've got to uh, set the center height, and then of course also, um, I've got the post rotated right now. And this, for this operation, this is definitely one of the operations where I do want the tool to be at a 90 degree angle to the axis of the uh, part. So, um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna Loosen this nut with my new wrench. I guess I should have done that before I took them. <coughs> there we go. All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this over right up to the jaws. I'm going to use the front face of the jaws. So basically, I'm relying on the flat face of the jaws there to be square and at 90 degrees to the side of the chuck here which is in the same which is parallel to the uh, imaginary line that goes through the uh, tailstock through the spindle just run right up to it and then back off just a tiny bit There we go. I had to snug it up a little bit now. That looks good. All right, now I need to set the center height. And I can see I'm way above center here. So, uh, I've gotta, gotta get me a wrench to loosen this nut. Hey. Studs bent. Son of a gun. I can see that. Uh, it just seems like there's no good way to ship these things. I'm going to start by eyeballing it. And then I'm going to use the old pinch the scale between the workpiece and the uh, Cutter trick. Oh, it's tilted a little bit this way, which means I'm a little bit above still. Try there. Oh, boy, boy, that made a big difference. I'm, I'm too far below now. That's pretty good. It's still a little low. And I think I either want it dead on or a little above, if I'm not mistaken. Well, that's pretty good right there. All right, I like that, so. Oh, check it one more time since I just tightened it up, just make sure nothing changed. Nope, looks good, I like it. So now, roll my sleeves up. All right, I gotta get some lube. Because I know you're supposed to use a lot of lube when you're doing this operation. All right, safety glasses, lubricant. Uh, I want to lock the apron. Okay, apron's locked. All right, wish me luck. Just occurred to me, I uh, I don't need the feed for this operation, so. Um, I just like how much quieter this runs with that disengaged.
chatter going on there. All right, that's an awful lot of chattering going on there. Heavy vibration. Cutter almost seems to be digging in. So, um, hmm. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drop, I'm gonna drop the cutter down a little bit lower and see how that acts. So I'm gonna give this uh, wheel. Yeah. Just make a little mark here in the dirt on the wheel. Gonna give this half a turn. Let's have a turn. All right, so I just dropped it down a little bit. <laughs> if that makes it worse or doesn't make much improvement, then I'll bring it up a full turn, which will be a half turn, would be back to where it was, and then another half turn up. In theory. Is my speed too high? down there in the groove looks good. Oh, well, I found where the macro button was on this darn thing. So now I can get it to focus close up. be the absence of a little nipple in the middle there would be an indication that I've got my I've got my height set just right which is kind of surprising because I was just messing with it but it is oh look at that even a blind squirrel catches the occasional acorn all right I'm satisfied that uh, that cutoff tool works adequately for my needs. Probably made for a really high speed, you know, CNC lathe or something like that, but we'll play around with it. <laughs> 